Two years ago when we made our debut in this competition we reached a quarter finals only to be humbled by Manchester City. Last year we went all the way to the final before being beaten by the best team in the world Paris Saint-Germain but this year our third season I'm targeting a final place, but it all starts here. The draw for the group stage where once again Brescia have been seeded first for it. And when you look at the second seeds here, the third seeds and the fourth, as I always say, avoiding a group of death, it's doable, but there's a big chance you'll get a very tough one indeed. I'd say the group of death this year would be Liverpool. I don't want Liverpool. Liverpool, RB Leipzig, and Anderlet maybe? Possibly take an RB Leipzig and do Valencia and Borussia Mönchengladbach. I'm not sure, but let's find out who we've got. First, he's coming out first, and we are in Group D. Obviously, we can't get Juve or Roma in this. I'm predicting an English team because there are three there. And it's not. It's Borussia Dortmund, who we knocked out last year in the quarterfinals on our way to the final. So that means we can't get RB Leipzig, which is really, really crucial. But I'm really hopeful it's not going to be Leon or Valencia. That will be tough indeed. It could be either. And it is indeed Valencia in Group D as well. Oh, my word. We can't get Borussia Mönchengladbach back then. But to be fair, all of these teams coming out here, I'd fancy our chances against home or away. And it's going to be Anderlet, the Belgian side, who are often very good at producing young talent. Well... That's a tough one. A lot tougher than last year, I would say. Borussia Dortmund last year's quarter finalist. Valencia in there as well. And again, Anderlet, I think we should be able to beat home and away, but that's not an easy group by any stretch of the imagination. Is, is it a group we can get through? Absolutely. But with ease, absolutely not. Oh, dear. Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. It's episode number 61, and today we're returning with two big games with Brescia as we had a Champions League group opener against Valencia, who of course we faced last season in the group, and also our bogey team, Udinese away in the Serie A. Before we get to the games though, shout out Brescia getting on off camera. And of course, in the last episode, you saw the season opener against Kovac's Bologna, where we won by two goals to nil as we go for our four straight Serie A titles. Uh, just two games in a run off camera, both in the Serie A, and as you can see, both wins and two straight clean sheets to go along with the one we had on the opening day as well. Uh, first away from home against uh, Roma at the Stadio Olimpico, massive 1 0 victory this one against one of the best teams in Italy. Andre Anderson discussed him in the last episode, con uh, scored a contender for goal of the season just two games in, uh, received a little knockoff from Esbozito inside our own half and he went coast to coast this is the Andre Anderson I thought we were getting last season I'm hoping this year now he's going to get a lot more game time in this 4-2-3-1 system in the advanced playmaker role he'll be doing this sort of stuff on a regular basis wonderful wonderful solo goal there as we won the game by a goal to nil and our second final game of camera was a 2-0 victory against Sampdoria at home on the back of an international break both goals coming from set pieces Anderson making it two goals in two games bit of an easy one though uh, scratch Happy uh, goal he converted from close range and uh, on the stroke of half time Spastiano Esposito scored his first goal of the season heading in a Gavoni free kick as we got the win by two goals to nil. So yeah, three straight wins in the Serie A, no goals conceded and five goals scored. We currently sit in second place only behind Napoli on goal difference right now but we are one of only two to, uh, only only two teams yet to concede a goal since the set of seasons began and again, one of only two teams with a 100% record as well. Good start for Brescia. Couldn't have asked for much more. And of course, you would have seen it at the start of today's episode. The Champions League group draw has been made. We've got the first game today against Valencia as well. And as we head into it with the game against Udinese on the weekend, it might have been a perfect start for Brescia, but I think it's going to come to an abrupt end on the weekend. We have such a big problem against these guys. Heading into the game, though, as we take on Valencia, as you can see, we have had some injuries in the run of camera. As you know, Viviani broke his ankle in pre-season. We won't see him for a while, probably not until November, December time, I would say. And and we're missing our captain Armini. He went down with a torn groin muscle in training. He'll be out for three weeks and thus will miss both our games today. And with Barbieri, our backup right back as well, he sprained his knee ligaments in training. He's out for three to five weeks. We probably won't see him again until the start of November, late October at the earliest. Yeah, three injuries to three important players to start the campaign off with two important players and a good backup right back as well. Not great, but at the moment we're handling without them. This is our team. We're still to control possession style of play after three straight wins. And why change the tactics or the lineup on the back of 
of those three straight victories. Well, there is in goal. Back four is Pellegrini, Bastoni, Sistano De Paoli, with Rigora and Gavoni through the middle. Salcedo on the left, Picardi on the right, Anderson, a uh, man of the moment so far through the middle, and there's Bozito up top. And on the bench, Mola, Perola, Muri, Mergia, Storaro, Franchi, and Simonetti as well. First of the two, it's Valencia in the group opener. Forza Brescia, let's start off the group with a win. Yeah, if I remember correctly, we lost to Valencia on match day six, but at that point, sorry, match day five even, but at that point, we'd already guaranteed qualification with two games to spare. But we beat them in the group opener by three goals to nil in Brescia. So we had one win and one loss against them last season. How are we going to start the group off this time around? First time playing in Verona. Very interesting indeed. Let's see if we can start off with a victory here. Eddie Salcedo receives a long kick from Ordero and goes to round one. Lovely dribbling from Eddie. We know he can do this. Brilliant solo run. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. An assist. A goalkeeper assist. We barely see it these days. Paolo Gazaniga. Dean Henderson. Soon, they'd be proud of that one as Salcedo gives the lead with his second of the year already. I said he's such a good dribbler, Eddie Salcedo. Oftentimes, it's his end product that lets him down. Brilliant solo run and slots into the near post. And for Ordero, first goalkeeper assist of the save. Things you love to see. You don't actually see it in a uh, goalkeeper's uh, career history anymore. I think you used to, but I know you don't anymore. You don't see like if they get an assist during a season, which is kind of frustrating because, again, it's very, very rare, but it can happen on those rare occasions, and they're so cool. Ordero claims that one as Wallace heads that corner just wide of the post, but for Salcedo, we talk about him so often. He's a streaky type of goal scorer. There was bids from Bologna and Napoli on transfer deadline day. I rejected them both. I've kept him here. I've got no plans to sell. Him. He's a really class player when he wants to be. I find he's just that sort of player, Eddie Salcedo. You know, when he wants to be, when he wants to be that sort of star man in the team, he can be. I thought he and Esbozito were going to be like the, you know, two the two boys, and, and both of them were going to be as good as each other. Let's be honest here, Sebastiano is head and shoulders above Eddie Salcedo, but every now and then his uh, his inter bro does come up big when we need him, and he certainly has to start this game off. Still leading by one as Gavoni finds Rigor, our new gen slash region midfield duo, picking the ball between one another. Bacardi beats Jose Gaia, and Sebastiano really should have got his second of the season. Slow start for our number nine this year. Should have got his first in Europe. Of course, he won the Golden Boot both in the Champions League and in the Serie A last season. Not a great start for him. I was saying, how is he going to recover after missing those penalties in the Nation League in both the final and the third place playoff as well? Well, let's be honest, not great. Second half to begin with dominating possession, 70% of it, and that's what we need to expect in this system. Second half to begin, as things stand, if we keep on knocking the ball around like we are right now, we'll be fine. I'm sure a second chance will come, and if it falls to the right man, we should be able to take it. The Pauli down the right-hand side, back to Gavoni, getting a lot of minutes this season with Viviani down with a broken ankle. Force back to Sistana, as we'll play our way forward here at a very low tempo, and I'm fine with this. I'm fine with this. You've got to go backwards, go backwards. I'm fine with it. Rigora whips a brilliant ball out wide to the Pauli though. And as he crosses, oh, streaky Salcedo almost got his second. But Bacardi says, don't worry, Eddie, I'll clean up the mess. CP14, second of the year, pressure lead by two. And there is the cushion we wanted. What a ball by Rigora to find a Pauli in eggs of space. Lovely cross to the back stick. Fantastic save at point blank range. But Wallace, really, he's got to have the awareness. You taught this in junior football. Don't just head it back into open play. If you've got to put it behind for a corner, do so. Just push it as wide away as possible. I was taught as a goalkeeper. Push it as wide away as possible or turn it behind for a corner if you can't hold on to it. Anyway, 2-0, half an hour to go. I think the points are in the bag now. We've controlled this game and that's what this system is all about. Controlling the game. Yeah, this system is not about urgency and playing the game at a very lightning quick pace. It's all about controlling things. You'll notice at the start of the season off, we've not scored that many goals, but it's our fourth game in all competitions. We've not conceded one yet, and we've won the possession battle in almost every single one. Two to the final score, Salcedo and Bacardi, the goal scorers. And just like last season in the group, we start off with the three points. Delighted. Bacardi did not misplace a pass in that game either. Last year, as we know, it was his best season in a Brescia shirt. His determination out to 16, the resolute personality. And this season, one goal in his first three in the Serie A, two in four in all competitions. I'm just wondering whether we can build on last season. I feel like every single season, apart from season two, where it was absolutely shocking, he's got better and better. Just how much better can this guy get? He's only 22 years old. He only turned 22 in February, and this guy is still a rising star, and I'm hoping this year he'll finally get his first cap for Italy as well. He and Nicolo, I want to see it happen. I want to see them both get their first caps for the senior national team. 
So, second and final game of today's episode. Let's keep the win streak going as we face Udinese, our bogey team away from home. Off to a decent start this season as well, already in uh, in sixth place with two wins in their first three games and yet to taste defeats either. We've had so many problems with these guys since the save began. Will this be just another one of those games? They've actually got our former uh, coach, Hannes Wolf, in charge. He left us uh, during last season towards the back end of it. He's now in charge there. He knows me well. Let's see who comes out on top then in this game. So no change to the lineup or the tactics once again because why mess with the winning formula? The players are getting a little bit tired out there. And we've got some uh, big games coming as well in the next six days. We'll see how we get on though. With Ordero in goal, once again, the back four being Pellegrini. But Stoney has been brilliant since coming in, hasn't he? Uh, leading this team at the back alongside Sistat. Oh, God. No, sorry. <laughs> Sistana, uh, De Paoli, Rigora, Gavoni through the middle with Salcedo on the left, Picardi on the right, Anderson through the middle, and Esbozito. Come on, son, get a move on up top. On the bench, Mola, Parola, Papetti, Miri, Pascucci, De Sisto, Mosier, Storaro, Peroni, Dal Monte, Franchi, and Simonetti. Second and final game. Let's beat our bogey team once and for all, perhaps. Forza Russia. When you go into the analysis screen in Football Manager, depending on your machine, sometimes it can take a while for it to load. And with my Mac, as you guys know, it's been through the wars in all the years I've had it. I was a little bit worried it was going to crash there. Anyway, first highlight, falling to Udinese. And seven minutes in, we've fallen behind. We just can't beat these guys. Martinez whips in a free kick from deep. And, I mean, someone's got to take charge of that. You should not be having a free header after the ball had bounced from three yards out. That should not be happening. Awful. Absolutely awful. And Udinese take the lead. I don't know what it is about these guys, but we just cannot beat them on a consistent basis. But I say it all the time, man. In Football Manager, every single player, every single one of you guys, as Bozito hits it straight at Musu, has got a bogey team. In, in FM this year for me, it's Udinese. Wow. Half time. Down by a goal. Statistically, it's been very even indeed. In fact, basically as even as you can get. But we haven't really got going. So at the break, I'm going to assertively say to the boys, show me something else in the second half. And what I'm going to do, it's not really what we do with this system, but we're going to play at a much higher tempo. I'm going to tell the boys to be more expressive and start running at the defense as well and putting some fear into that back line. Second half to begin, still trailing by one. Napoli, thankfully, are behind De Sassuolo at home. But we, the, the problem continues, man. We can't beat these guys. And here come Udinese again in this second half, cross the far post and headed just off target as we still only lead by, uh, sorry, still trail by a goal. But we, we have not created enough today, not at all. We have a higher sense of urgency and tempo in the second half, I'm expecting one or two chances, but let's see if we can get on right here. Lovely cross field by Gavoni, Pellegrini controls, and he slide through Eddie? He can't, but he'll drop to Salcedo. One man to beat, back to Luca. steps inside, shoots and scores, and gets his first of the season. Brescia find a leveler, but a draw's not good enough, man. We need to win this. I know it's early days, but this is a big game with Udinese in form. Napoli off to a red-hot start and us looking to maintain our unbeaten streak. This is a psychological hurdle that I want to overcome today. We got back on level terms. Salcedo's been probably our player of the season so far with the assist. And Pellegrini does the rest after the layoff. Come on, Brescia, man. I want to win this. I want to win this one as much as I wanted to win against Valencia as that shot is. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just a carbon copy of Andre Onana. A carbon copy of the guy. You live by Ordero, you die by Ordero. Extraordinary. And for Esbozito as well, mate, get a move on. Come on, one goal since the season began in all competitions. You're better than this. Picardi on the ball, finds him, ears burning, straight at the goalkeeper, and yes, turns in the rebound. Picardi won't get credit with the assist, but it was his ball that freed him. And Sebastiano, two bites of the cherry, and eats it at the second attempt. Brescia flip the script, turn the game on its head, and get ourselves in front. He heard me on the touchline, slagging him off, and he shuts me up at the second time of asking. Brilliant ball by Picardi. Great start to the season for him. And Esbozito gets a little bit lucky but he will take it. Second goal in two league games, Brescia in front. And we've got some really tired legs out there as well. Not quite as tired as they were in the Club World Cup, of course, but still, as Esbozito looks to beat his man and put this game to bed. He should have done. Musso makes the save, and this, can't, this time he can't convert the rebound. Just seen Napoli have drawn back on level terms against Sassuolo. So if we are to go top, we'll need to hold on to the three points. Five minutes to do that. We've really turned things in our favour in the second half as well. Playing at a higher tempo, that's certainly helped a lot. 
Yep, just casually praise yourself, why don't you, mate? Just just casually give yourself a pat on the back before the game's even finished. I mean, to be fair, it's rare I get the tactics right, so every time something does change in our favour, I'll celebrate it. Esposito's free kick should have been converted by Sistana. If we don't win this game and don't hold on, I'll be fuming, man. I've had the chances, haven't put Udinese to bed, but thankfully, it does not matter. We grind out the victory, two on the final score, come from behind to beat our bogey team, and the winning start to the season continues. Four wins from four. We we might have conceded for the first time, but we've gone top of the Serie A with a 100% record. The only team remaining with that now, and we're two points clear of Fiorentina. I think it was in second place, and also a couple of hours in Napoli and Inter as well. Perfect start for Brescia. Long may it continue. And so that went into this episode of Club and Country, guys. A big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed. If you did, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'm not sure what games to come back with. I kind of fancy gathering some pace. We've got three big ones coming straight away. I guess what we could do is do Juve and Dortmund in, in two big clash there. Juve, of course, last year was so close to winning the title before we pipped it right at the end. And they'll be going for it. Yeah, let's do that. I need to gather some pace, but I don't really want to miss out any of these three games. If we miss out on the Milan game, and we'll do Juve and Dortmund in the very next episode in Match Day 2 in the Champions League. Have a great day, guys. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.